I'll send you guys the tonight. Tonight, yeah, I'll send it tonight so everybody can see, and then you'll have. Remind me at ten o'clock to email everyone the in case. Assumption. Okay, I'll remind you. Ta da! <laughs> what was the one from yesterday? Oh, yeah, somebody needed a oh, transcript of MD5s. Remind me at 10.01 to send everyone the transcript from MD5s. Okay, I'll remind you. <laughs> so, like, is that just in case? Is there something else that they can use? There? Every tool has some problem somewhere. And if you, as a person doing this job, if you're doing forensics especially, if you don't verify it, someone's life can be on the line. So it is your job to figure out when it's wrong rather than just accept the result. And that is the, that is the epitome of a forensics person. But very few do. Very few do. Very few. The common thing that happens that I see all the time, policeman gets computer. He runs in case. It sees a couple of pictures. He exports pictures to CD-ROM, hands that to district attorney, and says arrest the guy. They don't, they're not investigating. They're not looking at anything. They're not trying to figure out what actually occurred. They're not detecting. They're not doing detective work. There's no Sherlock Holmes happening here. Okay? I promise you. I, I would say my default is that there is, under almost no circumstance, Detect, detective work going on in any of these situations. Once someone has been arrested, it is very difficult for them to relinquish that person and just say, oh, well, we made a mistake or lose face. They'll never do that. I've had a photo of the dude doing it, not the client that I'm working for. A different dude doing it. And I have had, I, I can't even tell you how many hours I had to spend translating that to the police for them to finally go, fine, we'll go get the other guy and we'll let your guy go. So, no, that's, that's part of the question, like the, the forensic. So software put in the picture in there. Now you use, um, you know, you, you, the data recovery tools. Well, you found out it was, you know, where the whole thing, the data recovery tools have no pull. Because you're saying the end case is a copy of the original, it's meant for all that. Now the other one's just a clone that you can't verify that it hasn't been tampered, so you couldn't use that as evidence. Well, no, you, you can, and that's the point. Is That's why I said, like earlier, you know, did you make changes? Did you write something to the disk that wasn't the user data? We look at the image of the drive, um, and then we typically use Unix tools to timeline it. So we don't just get an image and then start trying to... See, we, we would call that Easter egging if we were basically just going down a, a tree and and trying to find pictures and say, aha, this is under so-and-so directory. Typically, we try to use a pivot point around a specific time frame um, that relates to why we got the escalation in the first place and try to see what was going on. And, and it, if files were opened by the person, you're going to have other artifacts um, that would be a timeline because it usually was created or X date. Right now. Well, there is a, usually a scope. So if you have a search warrant, in a lot of cases, a search warrant has a scope, and the scope has a certain set of requirements with which you must you must look at, and you can't usually go outside the scope of those requirements. Now, I don't know that he's having to apply a search warrant for those particular items, but there probably is some discussion about that. We're not looking for, you know. Uh, porn he might have been looking at three weeks ago. We're looking for this event where some embezzlement took place yesterday. We're not just searching for whatever occurred. But a lot of times on the flip side of that, if a computer is taken by the police, then they are looking for everything. They'll search everything. They'll see everything there. Even if there's search warrant, in a lot of cases I've seen search warrants where they describe what you're supposed to be looking for and what they find is not part of that case. They will enjoin that in some way and say that it was found as part of this case and therefore we can use it. It's the plain view doctrine. Yeah, well, th this isn't specifically plain view, but I, I understand what you mean for this instance, but there is other instances where, and it's not used as plain view, it's used um, by, you know, something to do with one crime does not, does not affect the ability to ignore the second crime. There's something in there, and I don't remember what it's called, but... Uh, Exigent circumstances, plain view, there's a whole bunch of exceptions. Yeah. Well, what does plain view mean? So, if you're investigating a case, so say you're called to a house, a police officer's called to a house to investigate a robbery, and they walk in and they find a bunch of drugs. They were there to investigate one crime, but they saw the other one. It's in plain view. They could look at it. And it's the same with a search warrant. If you have image someone's hard drive because you're worried about 
drug transaction and you're scanning the hard drive for any any indication of evidence that might be drugs, anything related to that, and you come across child porn, that was in plain view. It was in the scope of the search and you found another crime, you can then charge them with that too. But if you you were only supposed to be looking, your search warrant was to search financial transactions on SQL database, and you start hunting for images, you're likely outside the scope of the warrant. Right. Yep. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of that that happens, and I have a lot of cases. Like I said, I've done lots of criminal cases and lots of other cases, and I see those kind of things. And I'm not saying you know that the guy that I might be working for isn't a monster or something else, but but my problem is is that right. what should be done should be done right. I mean, it's fine if you're going to get my monster and take him to jail, but do it right. Don't don't make stuff up. Don't 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 destroy evidence. Don't fake evidence. Let's do it the right way. And you know, it, it may be a little utopian, but that's supposed to be the premise of the law. So, anyway, so that's kind of the situation we're in with regards to this. And, uh, and so, but verifying the stuff, looking at it, going through it, knowing where the bits are, knowing what you're looking for is very important in these instances. And it may come up every once in a while, like it might come up, hey, well, did he shut down his computer correctly or did he just pull the plug? Well, I can go and look at the dirty bit in the volume and say, well, the plug was just pulled. He didn't shut it down. I don't know if he shut it down. You know, or if the policeman pulled the plug, or if anybody clicked the button that says that. But if the dude testifies, every time I shut down my computer, I click the start button and shut down. But the cops show up and they pull the plug, and I can tell the difference, right? So that's where you start looking at, does this evidence match? So it matters. So anyway, so everybody kind of got the idea of what this is from this standpoint. So that's kind of the premise of, of the root of some of the things that we're going to use and search for. So you can close that. We don't need that anymore unless anybody has any questions about it. Now, with that editor, you won't see the, uh, the dirty bit and all that. You can't see that from here. Well, okay. it's not the best processing tool, let's put it that way. But yes, I can. I, I can. Uh, well, I, well so, so you have to know, um, as an example, I'm not going to pull up the memory stick because it's not a bootable one. Yeah. I'm going to pull up my local hard drive as an example. So I'm going to pull my local hard drive up. And in the local hard drive, there's metadata. So there is a section for metadata and the tables that are part of, of NTFS will be on the drive and they're right here. See these? All the ones that begin with dollar, those are all metadata files that are part of NTFS. Volume, yeah. Yep, and the dollar sign volume, um, and it's a live file, and so that's part of what's going on. But I would actually look at that in hex and then go through it here. But we're on a live drive, so that's part of why it's that volume right now doesn't show anything. That's on the system, that's on the, the system region for the drive, so you can actually read that from here. Yes, yes, you could. You could do that because you'll see some others will be locked as well, too. There are some things that are physically locked as far as the file goes itself. But um, if I open that on somebody else's hard drive, and if I did that with something else, you can actually see the volume information. Is an MFT mirror file? No, so MFT mirror is kind of a lie. It's only 4K in size. It's only four records, and one of them is itself. It's redundant, so it points to itself. It's only in case of a massive failure. It can go find the pointers to where the MFT begins, and it sits in the middle so even though it says, and this is part of tomorrow actually, so it's 4K. It is four records. And these four records are, three of them are important as to where the beginning of the MFT itself is. And then one of them is itself, its own mirror. This actually sits in the middle of the partition. You go to the end of the partition, you subtract one, you divide by two. It goes to the middle of the partition. And that way, every time that there's a failure, if a file can't be found, I mean, you, you know, pretty Windows is pretty robust. It does a really good job of repairing itself. And a lot of times it repairs itself and does stuff on the fly that you don't even know about and fixes stuff behind the scenes. And that's one of the things it does is that if it can't find the MFT entry for some reason, a pointer is screwed up in one of the original records, it will go to the middle of the disk, find the pointer to it, and go to it anyway. So, and it will repair itself on the fly. So that's what these records are. So we're going to cover that to more tomorrow, but that's the point of that record, is it's somewhat a lie. There is no other copy of the MFT. The MFT itself is one entity. Every record is two sectors, 
And so every single file that exists on the drive has two records associated with two sectors associated with that record. And that's it. Period. There's no other copy. Okay? Everybody good with the answer so far? Good. And there's like 18 of these. Anybody know why it, all of these records begin with dollar signs? Because Microsoft likes dollars. <laughs> but typically it means that they are hidden from the system because they are part of the system's uh, metadata files. So there'll be others, there'll be quota and other stuff. And surprisingly, so our recycle bin right now uh, in XP, it was not a dollar sign. Later on, it is. Later on, they add all the records that go with the recycler as a dollar R and dollar I. So they actually eventually make all the records that go with it uh, as a... You know, they eventually consistently make everything start with the dollar symbol for, for symbolic stuff. Okay? Everybody good? good. All right. So, so pretty good lab. You guys like that lab? Yeah. You learn a lot? Yes? Yeah. Help you? It's really going to help when you get through some other stuff. So stuff. I do want to go back to the book for a minute. And so we have, um, we have about 45 minutes to kind of whack out what I have here. Um, and then this afternoon, we're going to jump into assembly and disassembly of a drive and then we'll start stepping through the diagnostics from that process. So that's what the rest of this book is. Do you guys want to take just a five minute break? Don't make it too long? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we get more of those protein things? Yeah, uh, the, the, the nut ones for those nut bars or something? What were they? Oh, yeah, the nuts. They're yep, I'll, uh, I'll ask Allison to go by and get some today. More healthy stuff? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> More, more healthy stuff. Yeah. I guess we have more health. When, when, when she comes today, I'll have her go buy BJ's and, and try to bring them, or I'll stop by the office and pick them up or something. Fruit? You want some fruit? All right.